is the Friday Night 360 AZ preview show. Haley Stasiak and Jordan Ham. Three weeks left in the regular season. We are getting through this one super fast. Let's go ahead and jump right in here. We have Derek Zellner, Gilbert head coach, joining us. Trenton Bourget, Morana senior quarterback, and Jose Garcia of AZ Preps 365 coming on with us today. A lot to cover here in this first segment with breaking down and previewing some games. Let's jump into that. South Point Catholic at Canyon Del Oro is where we're going to start. South Point Catholic, B. John Robinson. He's got over 1,200 rushing yards. Hard to stop him mm -hmm. at all. You can't. I know another one that we've talked quite a bit about with South Point is Lathan Ransom. He's someone to watch. Canaan Del Oro is also a run heavy team. So we're going to see a lot of uh, grass being torn up to this, on Friday night. This game is going to be done by 8 15. <laughs> it's just going to be a lot of running. Um, Bijan Robinson coming off a performance, uh, 250 yards on nine rushes. That's an average of 27.8 yards and four touchdowns. So um, seems like Bijan is kind of hitting his stride nicely. Uh, that that defense for South Point too is just so good. Um, and a, a guy I don't think gets talked enough about Mario Padilla. He's kind mm -hmm. of a complimentary back. He'll be a, a factor in the pass game as well. Um, you know, he can make some catches out of the backfield um, in the slot, that sort of thing. Um, he's a really nice player. Uh, CDO, um, five and two on the year. One of those losses was to Flowing Wells. That was week zero, uh, one point loss. So uh, mm -hmm. this is a, a good uh, CDO team. We didn't really kind of know where they would be. Yeah. Elijah Carey uh, had graduated, so we weren't quite sure how they, they fit into the fold. But um, having a really solid start to the season, um, but obviously a huge test with South Point. Well, and South Point is undefeated, and mm -hmm. they're surprisingly somewhat young team. A lot of juniors that are making an impact. So this will be a good one seeing how Canaan Del Oro stacks up against South Point Catholic. Next up, Mountain Point at Chaparral. Mountain Point coming off that Tukey Bowl loss to Desert Vista. Kind of thought they had started to turn the season around with mm -hmm. that big win against Highland, but still kind of working things out. Obviously, Chaparral's losses have come against Saguaro and Boulder Creek, which I know Boulder Creek might have been a bit of a surprise, but I saw Boulder Creek against Highland, and they have that Hendricks Johnson there, mm -hmm. receiver, who can make some big plays, big time plays. They Chaparral did manage to squeak out the win against O'Connor last week, but I think this Chaparral team is kind of turned into a team that we didn't expect this out of them at this point. They, uh, they've had quite a few shootouts recently, um, and you know the offense is going to put up the points. Uh, you know, you know. Uh, last week, Tommy Christakos touched the ball four times at the receiver position and had four touchdowns. Um, and Jack Miller had six passing touchdowns. Um, the and this is kind of just they're hitting the a really tough part of their schedule. Yeah. Um, you know, they have this game on Friday uh, and they end the year uh, with Pinnacle and Liberty. Uh, as it stands right now, Pinnacle and Liberty are the, the two and three teams in six A. And they're so, facing up this Friday. Yeah. So and and that's. So it's just a, a really tough stretch, um, you know, and it's a, an interesting backstory with this one because Mountain Point, a lot of that staff has chaparral ties. Conrad mm -hmm. Hamilton, the defensive coordinator, a lot of the support staff in on that defensive staff um, coached at chaparral for a very long time. Um, so it, I think for the, the people that know these programs, there's a, a little, a, 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 an extra edge to this game. But these are two teams that... Um, I think on any given day could beat any team in 6A, um, but they just haven't quite had everything click mm -hmm. quite yet, um, and they're just trying to get things right as we approach the playoffs. I think at the beginning of the season, this would have been a matchup that you looked at and said, this could be a pretty evenly matched. And then as you get into the season a little bit, you kind of think, mm, maybe one team has an edge over mm -hmm. the other. Now at this point, when you're looking at it on paper and the numbers, it could be one that's evenly matched again. I think Mountain Point does have a little bit of an edge still. Um, but yeah, this could be a, a tough one, close one, and it could be one of those ones that sets the tone for these last three weeks. Basha at Chandler next up. Basha six and one. That one loss came to Highland. Highland was defeated by Mountain Point to end that undefeated season for them. So keeping an eye on Highland through the rest of the season as well. But Basha, big win against Hamilton last week. Chandler's an obvious challenge, but mm -hmm. Chris McDonald has come in for the Bears, and he's gotten things going, and I'm looking forward to seeing how the Basha Bears handle this last half of the season. Ty Sifferman coming off um, in last week's game, had six receptions, 100 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Um, you know, he's a, a dual-sport guy, plays baseball, going to be going to GCU. To GCU. Um, so clearly he's an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, but when you look at the way that uh, Chandler and this defense has been playing lately, uh, you know, if you take out 
so we'll take out the the Corona Centennial loss where they gave up 35 points, um, 21 points to Queen Creek, shut out Mesa um, against Faith Lutheran, the, the Nevada team, 135-21, 13 points against Desert Ridge, uh, Perry, who's going to score their points, they gave up, gave right. up 34 points, but then uh, backed it up 56 to seven against Brophy. So um, it looks like the defense is starting to hit their stride. Some of their key transfers are eligible and have a couple games under their belt, um, but also just uber talented um you know and super deep i think that's what has separated mm -hmm. chandler the past couple of years is um you know there are a lot of, uh, of elite programs in 6a that can score their points chandler probably has the better defense over yeah. any of those teams and they have the depth how about brophy at perry brophy had a loss to chandler last week perry had the bye week last week and then the week previous also lost to chandler but they put up the fight as they always do against the wolves we spoke the other week that it's kind of all there for Brophy. When mm -hmm. I went out and saw them against Mesa Mountain View, things were there. It's just they're adjusting to new coaching staff and they're young guys still working out the kinks there. This schedule doesn't get easier for Brophy. I mean, they're going to be rounding it out with Basha. They've got had Chandler last week, Perry. And I mean, you look at this and Perry, we mentioned going up against Chandler and mm -hmm. being able to put that up. So this will be an interesting one to see how Brophy fares here. Yeah, the 6A premier section. I mean, is it any surprise that it's a gauntlet? Um, you know, you have those four teams in Chandler and then also Brophy. Um, and Brophy's bounced back really nicely after, after a tough year last year. Uh, but they are just a consistently good program. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a tale of two styles. Mm -hmm. You have Brophy who, um, you know, historically, especially under Scooter Molander, um, as I've said before, kind of has that Stanford feel. Um, now with John Kitna, it seems like it still yeah. has some some essence of that as well. Um, and then you look at Perry. Um, they have the running backs, but they like to kind of spread every Everybody out. Um, they like to get their playmakers in space, um, and they they do have a really really good running game. Um, but they're going to use that read option, try to get Chubba Spur uh, Purdy some some room to run, um, and then you know ha also have those running backs really take care of business. And, and Colby Dickey um, on the outside, who's just one of the more consistent receivers we've seen over the past couple of years. Lots of good games with this region play going. There's some competitive matchups here. This week I'm going to be out at Boulder Creek Desert Vista. I mentioned Henrix Johnson that mm -hmm. I saw there against Highland. He had a game there and then I'm looking forward to seeing this Desert Vista team that's somewhat young as well. They've got some juniors that are playmakers. So that is where I'm going. I'm looking forward to that. Where are you headed? I'll be at Pinnacle Liberty. Um, you know, I I wanted to definitely see, um, you know, Spencer Rattler in this passing game against a, a really good Liberty defense, kind of mm -hmm. see see that matchup. Um, and where it stands right now, again, you know, we got to kind of take the AIA rankings with a grain of salt as the, uh, you know, season progresses. But um, as it stands right now, number two, Liberty, number three, Pinnacle, um, that's going to be at Pinnacle. So um, just wanting to see two teams that are definitely going to make the playoffs, kind of how they're tuning up with a big matchup just a couple of weeks away from the postseason. What are you looking forward to here with these last three weeks most? I think just kind of see there. I mean, there are some really good teams that are on the fringe of, of the postseason. And it, it's that's just kind of the way that I think the parity is going to come up more and more as the you know high school scene kind of uh, progresses. I mean, as we look Mountain Point, a team we talked about, number 11, uh, Chaparral, number 13, that, mm -hmm. that's a game that has some pretty big implications. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it seems like over the past couple of years we've seen, you know, certain teams are able to make runs. As a three seed, as a four seed, it's not, for some, some schools, it's not that big of a deal um, to, you know, go in as potentially a lower seed right. or so. Um, but for some, you know, having that home field advantage is, is a big deal in those first couple of rounds of the playoffs. So um, I, I think that's just, you know, a, a lot of these games, we have a pretty good idea of kind of where everybody stands right now, but there's still a chance for movement. Anything can happen when it comes to Arizona high school football. Coming up next, we're going to have Gilbert head coach Derek Zellner. Keep it right here on the Friday Night 360 AZ Preview Show.